I'm going to Allah, but you have a little bit of your Allah. Now, this uh, week's motivation is um, explain why we have the God given right to prophesy and tell the wicked their destruction. Right? Now, uh, with that being said, we have the God given right to tell the wicked their destruction because the Lord uh, gave us commandment to do so. So, I'm going to get into some scriptures and some examples. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, and the Son of Man represents us, uh, of Israel though, not of all nations. Eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and this roll is talking about the scriptures, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So, uh, as you can see, it's not talking about nobody else. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll, and he said unto me, Son of Man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I may give thee. So, you know, then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Right, so the Lord told us to eat this book, get the understanding, and it's sweet unto us because we know that we got the kingdom of heaven coming. We know that uh, only Israel going to be saved, and everything that happened to us as far as slavery and in these different captivities up under these nations, we're going to get the due right back unto them. It says, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Right, so this is all coming out the scriptures, man. It's not coming from us. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel, the blacks, Latins, and Native Americans. Not to many people of a strong, strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Right. So them other nations would have listened to us. Just like how they, a lot of them listen to us now today. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. That's why there's a one-third and a two-third. So right along with us being com given commandments, we was told what was going to happen and the process that was, you know, was the, the process that was going to happen while we was doing it. It says, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. For they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. Right. So, you know, and when it's mean, when it says, for they will not hearken unto me, it's talking about they will not hearken unto these words that the Lord gave us to give to them. The Lord ain't finna come down here and uh, just tell them himself, you know, like the church, like the church portrays and shit, man. Uh, let me see. It says, um, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed, fearful at their looks. So we was given straight commandments, man, that the Lord was going to strengthen our face against our boldness against theirs, basically. Though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, in thy mind, and hear with thine ears, and go get thee to them of the captivity. The Israelites, because we're still in our captivity, man. We're not from America. We're from uh, the land of Israel. It says, And go get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus said the Lord, Yahweh, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Right, and you know, now we see how about Shema Shai. But this was uh, the Old Testament before Yahweh Shai came on the scene. So whether these people hear or forbear, we was given commandment, you know, to go tell them, you know. So. This is one of my favorite scriptures right here. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Right? So the Lord, you know, knew us before we came in our mother's belly. He knew us back in the spiritual world. He sanctified us, set us separately. How right is that we have the elect? Set us separate from the world, man. I sanctified thee. And I ordained a prophet unto the nations, unto the nations of Israel, man. So those were straight, you know, it was uh, a commandment given 
But in the beginning, it was already predestinated what was going to happen, man. All right, this is John chapter 17, verse 9. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Right, that word, word world right there is talking about the cosmos, which is uh, a secular group. Which is Israel, because the Lord only came for Israel. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And that's the elect. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are, right? Be in the same mind, you know, the same uh, spirit. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, right, Yahweh, and then it's Yahweh Shai. So when we call upon the name of the Lord, it's got to be Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, right? Because there's an elect. That's like I said, there's a predestined. See, the Lord sanctified His men, set them separate, and those were the ones that was predestined unto salvation, unto uh, doing this work. It says, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And the son of perdition is Judas. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Right? So, you know, we're going to be hated for this word, right? From everybody that ain't a part of it. It says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil, right? The evil times to come. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is thy truth, right? So this truth has separated us from, you know, Yahweh, we have the elect, but the truth has separated us from everybody, man. So this is back to uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained a prophet unto the nations. Right? So, you know, this was a commandment, man. That's why we got the right to do what we're doing. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. It says, I'm going to start at 14. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord Yahweh. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, right? So you're going to have brothers in this. I got a brother in this. You got other brothers. They got brothers in this. And I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, according to my mind which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, right? So the Lord not, you know, dealing with these church pastors because he said he was going to give them according to his heart, his mind. And the only ones that's coming uh, upon the Lord's mind and heart is the apostles of Jeremiah on down. Why? Because we get this from the scriptures. We go into the breakdowns, you know, Yahushua got us going into the, uh, the root words, bringing out all the history, you know. That's why it says, um, uh, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, right? So, we was given a, a task to uh, prophesy unto you people and feed y'all with knowledge and understanding, man. So, I'm going to get into some knowledge and understanding that you people must know. Because you got Jake saying, why only us? And, you know, the Lord only won't. Israel, he separated us from the nations, man. We are, uh, why do we even have this mentality? Because the Lord, you know, gave us this mentality. The Lord woke us up to who we are. The Lord only dealing with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He's not dealing with emotions. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord thy power shall bring thee into the land which thou goest to possess it. Let me see. Yeah, goes to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, those African nations, 
that were in the land of Israel. The Lord gave us the authority to cat, you know, kill them off and stuff. And when the Lord, Yahweh, thy power shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant nor agreements with them, nor shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughters shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the Lord, the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire, the idols. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord, and how will thy power, the Lord, thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, right? So, you know, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So that's just how it is, man. The Lord chose us to be above everybody, man. And that's the uh, wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures, man. All right. This is... um. Daniel chapter 9, verse 12. But like, you know, it says, um, And he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. Right, from under the whole heaven hath not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. Right, so, you know, even though the Lord gave us, you know, the Lord gave us that lot to be over everybody, but we sinned and went off because... We didn't keep that commandment that was in Deuteronomy 7. Israel started worshiping idols, and then the Lord brought the nations against us, and they had them take us down, and then we prayed to the Lord, and the Lord put us back in our position. But then we did the same wicked-ass shit over again. You know, so now we're up into, in the final captivity, which is America, which is the um, which is spiritually Rome, or the Rome uh, Empire reincarnated, and the Lord telling us that did no nation, you know, get done like how we got done, man? It says, uh, did I, I mean, Daniel chapter 9, verse 12. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing up upon us the great evil, right? Our captivity, our slavery. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So ain't no nation went through anything that we didn't went through, man. And I got a couple of books to bring that out. This is what this is what we're supposed to be telling y'all, man. Through the spirit of our smile shy. This is the lot that we was given. Cause ain't nobody else gonna do it. You know, the Lord said he sanctified men to go and do this. So, you know, yeah, I like this job, we have the elect. We doing our job. Until the end, it says give diligence. So this is um, the book is called Medical Apartheid: Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. This is uh, page two fifty five, verse uh, oh verse what? Uh, it's at the bottom. It starts as um, other medical experiments reserved for African Americans, right? And these were often the most risky and painful. So these are, you know, during these times, it was experimenting on Jake, uh, Black Slimes, and Native Americans, seeing what diseases work against us, uh, making bio plagues. They were doing it against the whites too, but we got it done the worst. It says, other medical experiments were reserved for African Americans. And these were often the most risky and painful, explains Hornblum at the Holmesburg prison complex where decisions about who participated in particular experiments were often left to inmate assistance. He explains, it is possible that the racism in American, American culture was reflected in the inmates' decision about who participated in a given tests. For example, only healthy colored male volunteers were permitted to enroll in a protocol for one 1957 Philadelphia experiment. 
Now, Jake and them be volunteering for uh, to take little drugs and stuff for Esau because Esau be promising them money and stuff, you know. So, you know, Jake probably did this because they was promised to get up out of prison or anything. But a lot of these experiments turned into the death of Jake. So it says, uh, to promote the inoculation of human skin with herpes simplex and herpes zoster which were painful and curable viral infections. See, and they say it was incurable. So if you really want to volunteer for an incurable disease, you know, I don't see Jake, you know, willingly doing nothing like that, man. So a lot of this shit was really forced, man. And Esau, uh, I tell Jake a lie in a second just to get him to do something, man. It says, however, in another Holmesburg experiment, which targeted young white volunteers required only that they lower an arm into a detergent. Sodium, laurel, sulfate found in many shampoos for an hour daily over 55 consecutive days. So you see the difference, man. And that's 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 the small, that's very small compared to everything else they didn't did to us, man. You know, they um, gave uh, Judah AIDS. You know, that was uh, an, a, a bio pledge <laughs> specifically for Judah. Uh, Ephraim got experimented on. I forget the exact disease. I think it's syphilis, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, but um, who else? Um, those are the ones that's right up the top of my dome right now. This is uh, the Trail of Tears. It says, uh, the Trail of Tears was a series of forced removals of Native American nations from their ancestral homelands in the southeastern United States to an area west of the Mississippi River that had been designated as Indian Territory. A forced relocations were carried out by various government authorities following the passage of the Indian Removal Act in 1830. Right, so, you know, uh, Esau, uh, under Andrew Jackson, um, just came in and took the land from uh, Gad. But not only was there Gad guys there, there was uh, Reubenites, and there was um, Judites, and, you know, more than likely, uh, certain of uh, other of the tribes was amongst them, but, you know, in small numbers. It says, the relocated people suffered from exposure, diseases, and starvation while en route. And more than 4,000 died before reaching their various destinations. The removal included members of the Cherokee, Muscogee, Seminole, Chickasaw, and Choctaw nations. The phrase Trail of Tears originated from a description of the removal of the Cherokee Nation in 1838. It says, between 1830 and 1850, the Chickasaw, Choctaw, Creek, Seminole and Cherokee people, including mixed race and black freed men and slaves who lived among them, were forcibly removed from their traditional lands in the southeastern United States and relocated further west. Those Native Americans that were relocated were forced to march to their destinations by state and local militias. The Cherokee removal in 1838 the last forced removal east of the Mississippi was brought on by the discovery of gold near Georgia in 1828, resulting in the Georgia gold rush approximately 2,000 to 6,000 of the 16,543 relocated Cherokee perished along the way. All right, so we're supposed to come out and tell our people that, you know, get our people that information and get them ready. You know, for, um, you know, what's going to happen to these nations, man. But, yeah, that was that was prophecy, man. This is uh, Micah chapter 2. Nope, I'm going to start with this. This is John. This is John.
This is John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Right? So the point is, the thief, which was them Edomite devils at that time, they came not but for to steal, steal the land, kill, kill the Indians off, because I know uh, Reuben them didn't go easy, and to destroy. So, you know, that's the point, man. And that's part of the understanding that we're supposed to be giving our people. Let's see. Because ultimately what, you know, Jake them going to find out is that Esau is the devil. This is Micah chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and take them by violence. So how did uh, Esau get America, man? They covered the fields and they took them by violence. Rape, rob, and murder, man. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage, right? So they, they didn't took everything from all the tribes, man. Took every took, took even took our women, take our kids, man. That's why the scriptures say in no nation has been done like unto us, man. We got it. We got it. The worst out of all nations. They was feeding the uh the uh kids to alligators for alligator shoes. They got a sanction to small quarters in sit certain cities, which they call ghettos or the hoods or the projects. Ain't no nations going through that like that. And we in all nations like that. These other nations got their countries, their, you know, their continents, their wealth. You know, they took all our shit, man. This is uh, Jeremiah. I'm going to end it off with this for the lack of time. This is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. It said, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. So we all got done like this, man. And we all over here right now in captivity. Salakia. We all right over here now in captivity being oppressed. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refuse to let them go. And we still are not captivity. And this white man, this Esau, this Edomite devil, don't want to let us go. He'd rather kill us off, you know. But Yahweh Shai is on his way back, you know. And uh, we're going to be redeemed, man. We're going to be uh, uh, put back on uh, on high. We're going to, you know, get the kingdom of heaven. And everything they did to us, we're going to do to them in righteousness, though, you know. But that's uh, it for the lesson. All praise to Yahweh Shai. Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the world, and salutation to the brothers of doing the truth with sincerity. Shalom.